So Drake recently dropped his newest album For All The Dogs, and the final product was about as polished as the album cover itself. In my opinion, Drake has not released a game-changing or even cohesive record since Views from the Six back in 2016, and that was the last time to me it actually sounded like he cared about every song and didn't just pack these albums with filler. Back then, Drake was definitely one of my favorite artists, and his three album run with Take Care, Nothing Was The Same, and If You're Reading This Is Too Late, has to be up there with the greatest consecutive album drops of all time. Even a mixtape like So Far Gone is still a classic to me. But since he dropped views, Drake has gotten more and more lackadaisical with these albums. There might be a song here and there that's worth listening to or adding to a playlist, but at some point the formula does become dry. Like I'm not saying these albums are bad, but at some point it just all kind of sounds the same. And I feel like there's just a lack of substance and a lack of subject matter that you would usually see from an artist his age. I mean, just listen to a song like Look What You've Done. Drake has not released something that personal in years. Instead, he is now in his mid-30s still rapping about women like it's a teenage love affair, still sneak dissing rappers and random women he's hooked up with, and overall the material has largely remained the same for the greater part of a decade. One could definitely argue that it doesn't matter because he is and will remain one of the most streamed artists in the world, so why would he ever change? But lately it seems like the Kriggs have been getting to Drake on a deeper level. We've always known that he was a sensitive guy, but he really let the words of two people specifically get to him this time. And so one of these people that really hit Drake stray in his ego was no other than Charlemagne the God. These two do have a pretty deep history dating back probably over 10 years at this point. Charlemagne has always been a pretty harsh critic when it comes to Drake, and Drake has also taken shots at Charlemagne over the years like when he rapped about him bleaching his skin, but it did seem at one point like these two were somewhat friendly, apparently Drake had sent him some bottles. But now it seems like they once again might have some beef, after Charlemagne had made these comments before the album even dropped when Drake released the first single on For All The Dogs, and he essentially said, hey, no one really cares about this song, and possibly there's not a lot of hype for this album. And it's not a scare, because Drake's gonna be fine. Drake put out a song last Friday, and nobody cared. What was the song? The Drake and Scissor record. No, oh. uh, people, that just dropped and people do like it. It came out last Friday. And, and it came out last Friday and people just started talking about the lyrics yesterday. And I remember, I, I'm in the group chat and I'm like, I'm, I'm like, damn, Drake put out this record Friday and people just get into the lyrics on a Monday? I mean. That's not Drake like. Oh. He's going to be fine regardless. I just think that, you know, it's also when you think about, you look at the album cover and you hear the title for All My Dogs, I think we was looking for something a little bit more harder. A little bit more aggressive. Let's right. see came out what with happens. This, this let's, slow joint with SZA. Let's see what Why happens. He's bringing the old Drake back, though. Is this old Drake, Alex? You a Drake fan? I don't... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's me. It's yeah, and Drake is really not rapping to his best ability on this album. Or singing, for that matter. There is quite a bit of vocals on here. But it just really does not feel like a focused effort. And some of the features he got from some of these artists were just trash. Like, the only real good features on the album are SZA, J. Cole, and 21 Savage. And even on the 21 Savage song, you have to get like four minutes deep into that thing, and you have to go through like some horrible skit. Either way, he's really just given his opinion here, you know, he didn't say anything too crazy, but Drake still got mad and took to Instagram to vent. So first, he posts some screenshots of an old interview that Charlemagne had done with Vlad back in the day, where he says there's three sexual orientations out here, straight, it's gay, <laughs> And it's Drake. And then he says, are you okay, Leonard? You weirded me out, G. Like you're really obsessed with me or something for years. Like you look in the mirror and you wish you saw my reflection type shit. Whatever you gotta do to lay it out, I'm sure your 435 loyal fans will stand by you, you goof. But obviously Drake was hurt by his comments, but it does seem like more of a uh, juvenile back and forth here. You know, maybe Drake thought that was a little bit too mean. So then he hits him with these pictures, kind of like clowning around. <laughs> yeah just making fun of him the thing is drake how can you like make fun of these pictures where they can literally pull you up in blackface right now anyway he says in deep thought about how you the off-brand morris chestnut which you know it's pretty funny i guess either way that one wasn't that personal i mean i guess he's saying that charlemagne doesn't have a lot of fans out here Regardless, the real clapback didn't really start until Drake decided to take shots at someone he used to look up to, someone he used to want to emulate when it came to his rap style, and that is no other than Joe Budden. 
And let's be honest about something, Joe Budden has been one of the biggest Drake meat writers of all time. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if at one time Joe had a secret Drake fan page on Twitter. I mean, they also had the era where he was dropping like 14 minute disc records on Drake's head, while Drake in turn was responding with like one line. So I guess you could say they've had like a back and forth relationship, but overall, Joe has stood in Drake's corner time and time again, and in a lot of ways has essentially propped him up as one of the greatest artists of all time. And obviously, whenever Drake drops an album, Joe makes an entire episode on it for his podcast, and in this latest one, he had some critical words for The Sixth God. This might be my last rap album review. 98% mm. of y'all sound uninspired. Mm -hmm. Y'all do sound low effort. There's no new, exciting, creative energy on the way. All of y'all sound like y'all trying to sound like Someone the else. artists that you like a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. None of y'all seem to be trying to innovate. I miss the Drake that when he dropped, the rappers hit him. Not these little f I don't give a f about you and Kai Sinat. That's gonna sound like hate. <laughs> it is. And what he's talking about there, for those of you that don't know, is that uh, Kai Sinat, you know, one of the world's most famous streamers, was doing a live reaction to his album the morning it dropped and was like bugging out over this one line about, you know, how all Drake's little homies are streaming or some bullshit like that. It's not hate. It's not hate. It is. Sorry. Go find some your age. <laughs> Hang out with them. Get some of that sauce. Where is the verse that Yachty said is arguably one of the best verses Drake has ever written? It's nowhere on this project. No. His top 10, he 20, don't even 30, have the 40, best verse on his project. top 50 verses are not on this project. And that's where I recognize I have to let go of I have to let go of, of Drake. I have to let go. The Drake <laughs> that I love. He sounds sad, man. Was the best hook creator maker loner outer of in the world mm -hmm. when is the last mem Fact. what is the last memorable hook you've heard from drake i haven't heard a dominant Fact. hook from drake in a long time so now you couple that with he don't he don't rap the way that he stay scheming take care this is like yachty rapping this is like he rapping for the children and that's my yo dog i had to look up how old this was when i finished listening to the album <laughs> you are 36 your birthday is in 20 days. I Googled that too. You are like 37 years old. Get the f away from some of these younger niggas. I'm want to hear adult Drake rapping for adult people. No, you're not going to hear That's that. my issue with him today. You're not well, and that's the difference between the progression of someone like Jay-Z's career and Drake. Like I said, at this point... I think a lot of people did feel like they were gonna get more subject matter from Drake and he's kind of more or less still rapping for like college kids. Which is cool but at some point it does kind of feel like you're the older guy showing up to the high school games on a Friday night. Reminiscing on when you scored that one touchdown. You're not gonna hear he, that rapping, he rapping for the kids, the streams, the, 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 the algorithm, comments, the algorithm. Yeah, he rapping. I'm rapping for this. No, he ain't really rapping. Just, he ain't trying to rap for me. No, it's not. And I accept that. I mean, let's be honest, when Drake put out that it's a right foot slide, left foot step, or whatever the fuck. I think a lot of people knew like the direction his career was gonna be going. I certainly don't wanna sound like I'm sitting here complaining. If he don't make another song, I am well fed, pause. <laughs> And it's true, Drake does have a very large body of music that, you know, for me personally, throughout different times of the year, I like to throw on his different records. But I think for a lot of people, they're just waiting on that, like, next Drake classic, and I just don't know if it's ever gonna come. I also do want to acknowledge that I did watch the entire podcast episode here, not just this, like, two-minute clip that went viral. The full thing is, like, over an hour. And for the most part, while Joe Budden was critical of the album, he also gave Drake a lot of praise. And a lot of it didn't come off as straight hate, it was more just kind of like advice. But that album review, it must have really just hit Drake right in the feelings. Like it almost feels like the guy who didn't get approval from his older brother once he dropped this comment. So he says, Joe Budden, you have failed at music. You left it behind to do what you were doing in this clip because there's what is actually paying your bills. For any artist watching this, just remember you were watching a failure give their opinion on his idea of a recipe for success. A quitter give their opinion on how to achieve longevity. You switch careers because the things that pop into your head had you broke living check to check and the raps you write had 450 men showing up to your shows in dusty jeans to screw up their face to Moon Music 29 and pretend you are the GOAT. So he's really trying to come back and hit Joe where it really hurts, which is like this failed rap career. Please, to any artist that's doing what they feel is right, don't let these opinions affect your mindset after the fact, like he's obviously doing right now. 
This guy is the poster child of frustration and surrendering. You retired and we never hung up your jersey. We don't even remember your number. We know you for doing this. You withdrew from rap not because you accomplished all you need to. It's because it wasn't working for you. I never want anybody in the generations to think that the whole everybody's entitled to their opinion is a real thing. This man is a projection of his own self-hate and the fact that I did and continue to do everything he wanted to do for himself. If you need it put in simpler terms, I own a 767, I guess that's some sort of jet probably. He owns a modest house in the 973 and flies first class on special occasions. I mean, I won't lie to you guys, in this situation it does feel like Drake is taking a massive L. Like to me, the fact that he just released this album, it should be a time for celebration. And you know he's just on his phone somewhere in some dark room in his mansion typing out this angry message is pretty hilarious. Like, you know it struck a chord when we're seeing this type of message. And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that when Drake first kind of came into the rap game, he was obviously trying to emulate all of these, like, well-respected, more underground rappers. And I think he never really got that true respect as an MC. I remember when he was first coming up, there would be all these memes about his career, basically just calling him overly emotional. As you guys saw with the Charlemagne comment about there's straight, there's gay, and then there's Drake. And I think he's always kind of had this chip on his shoulder because those type of people never really gave him the respect that he felt he deserved. And so of course with their internet beef, old clips are gonna resurface. And people were saying that it was ironic that Drake was talking about 450 men showing up to your show, screwing up their face over your music. When back in the day when he was first on the come up, he was one of those men. There's an old clip from Joe Budden's YouTube channel when he first met Drake, you know, probably over a decade ago. I'm happy, I'm honored, I'm, 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 I'm honored to be around you. you yeah, are, I got this. Man, I'm, I'm genuinely saying it's an honor to be around Joe Budden. It's the first time we've met. And so that right there was like the bright eyed Drake on the come up, probably experiencing a bunch of things he never thought would happen. And obviously, like many other artists, you know, at some point you just become jaded to a lot of that and you probably learn what the industry is kind of all about and you don't really like it. I mean, I don't know if anyone else is tired of like the mob boss Drake arc where he's trying to act like he's like the hardest out here in these streets. But to me, it just comes off as a little bit corny when like we know where you came from, dude. You were on Degrassi in a wheelchair. Either way, I want to know what you guys think about not only the Drake album, but these whole beefs down below. What do you think about his very aggressive comments? Because to me, he just sounds very hurt. Either way, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like and subscribing. As all know, it's been your boy, Tana Superman, and some other rap beef out here needs to be covered, so I'm out. Peace.